All right, today we're going to talk about why lithospheric plates move. So with plate tectonics, we know that our solid lithosphere, um, the plates are moving around, they come together, they move apart, and they slide past each other. And the question is, why do they actually move? So early on, when we looked at plate tectonic theory, um, we had people who figured out why it's moving. And what happened when we go and we look at our ocean, so that will be our sea level. We'll draw our mid-oceanic ridge. So mid-oceanic ridge, MOR. Um, what happened originally, um, Harry Hess and Robert Dietz, so Hess was at Princeton, Dietz was at Scripps Institute of Oceanography. In the early 1960s, they were looking at all of the landforms in our oceans, and they looked at our mid-oceanic ridges, and they proposed that movements uh, within the mantle, the asthenosphere, were causing the plates to move, and that movement was convection. Now, convection just means we had this hot mantle was rising up. It would then move out in the directions and the plates would get moved on top of it. Eventually, a plate would get into a subduction zone. It would collide with another plate. So we have some continental lithosphere, our oceanic lithosphere, and we would get subduction And then this mantle material would be just coming down and then it would eventually circulate back. So we'd get these big convection currents within our mantle and that was proposed for the driver of plate motion. And that's pretty logical. It makes sense that if you have something moving around below, the plates on top are going to move. Well, what we've found out is that our mantle moves at a few centimeters per year. Oh, that's a terrible pen. Let's throw that one out. So that's moving at a few centimeters per year. Um, and in different places in our oceans um, and around the earth, that's fine. Except it's not, it doesn't work everywhere. So in some places, our lithospheric plates do move a few centimeters per year. So in that two to three, up to even five centimeters per year. So places like the North American plate move a little bit more slowly but we also have places where our plates move very fast. So we see places, let's see, um, we have fast moving plates, which are like 10 to 15 centimeters per year. Um, if we wanted to go for some examples, um, in the Southeast Pacific, around the Nazca plate, we see this fast movement. We see some down by the Tonga Trench where the plates are moving very, very fast. And that does not really align with this few centimeters per year. In other places, we have moderately moving. So that would be like five to 10 centimeters per year. And then we have slow, which would be less than five centimeters per year. So if we have all these different movements, it can't just be convection in the mantle that's just having these plates kind of move passively along. So what else is happening? So what else is happening? So the reality, when we start thinking about it, it's not just that the plates are kind of hanging out and just running into each other or moving apart. They're actually playing a role in the movements of the plates themselves. And we have three different ways that we can, um, we can see how the plates move. The first way is one that's called um, slab pull. Now what slab pull says is that the descending plate in that subduction zone actually plays a role in pulling the rest of the plate behind it. So if we can imagine, we'll kind of draw our nice continental lithosphere. Okay, so that's sitting there and we have this oceanic plate which is thinner and denser and it's going down in this subduction zone. Okay, and it is an oceanic plate, so here, we'll put some water. 
for sea level. So what the idea of slab pull is that this oceanic plate, which is already denser, um, as it goes down, this plate is old. So the older lithosphere is cooler and denser than the younger lithosphere that we see out at our mid-oceanic ridges. So as this comes down, it's cold and it's dense, and that pulls the plate down. So this you can imagine if you had a tablecloth on a table and you had um, maybe the, the tablecloth, if you just slide it towards the edge so that more of it starts to hang off the table, as it starts to go, as more of the tablecloth kind of goes off the edge of the table, it pulls the rest of the tablecloth behind it. So that's this idea of slab pull. Okay. Um, Now the second idea ties along with this one, and this is called slab suction. Okay, so now in this case, we again have our continental lithosphere, and we're having this subduction zone. So we have our oceanic plate coming down. We'll draw our water back in. Now what happens this time is the plate is coming down, but it's cold and it's dense. And it just doesn't dive down forever. But as it goes down, it actually starts to fall back in towards the mantle. So it kind of falls back this way. And as it pulls this way, it pulls the rest of the material towards it. So in slab suction, the de plate descends and it rolls back. And as it does that, it creates this suction current that moves the continental lithospheric plate towards the subduction zone. So this descending plate um, actually ends up pulling the overriding continental plate towards it. So that's the idea of slab suction. Um, now an example that we might see that is if we go and we look at the Pacific Ocean where we have the Nazca plate, we would need to turn this whole picture around. Um, so we have the Nazca plate and it's descending and we have the uh, South American plate and it is uh, the overriding plate. So as the Nazca plate goes down and it rolls back, it's pulling the South American plate towards it or to the west. Um, so that would be an example where we could see slab suction. So this is, these are two, um, two great ways that we can see how the oceanic plates start to play a role in the movement of the plates. Um, but at one point, you know, the whole system had to get started. So um, scientists started to wonder, well, how do you even get the plates to be moving in the original, the original Earth? So when things got started. Um, so what role might other plates play, those continental plates? And that's where we get into this idea of ridge push. Um, now ridge push really goes to look more at our rift zones or so divergent plate boundaries. Um, this can happen in our oceanic plates as well as our continental plates. Um, but basically what starts to happen is we have very hot asthenosphere. And we know that hot materials, the molecules start to move apart. We are more energetic. Um, they move apart and they expand, um, and that actually starts to create this kind of bulge of mantle material. It rises up and it pushes the overlying lithosphere up and away. And so that's what creates our zone. So this rises up and then it's less dense and it pushes outwards and then it starts to push the plates as it goes, this mound of material. Gravity starts to pull it down and it pushes the colder 
cooler lithospheric plates away from this rise. Okay, so um, this is driven by that hot asthenosphere down below. Um, so this can really help us explain why our continental lithosphere first broke up when we think about Pangaea, that big mass that came together. So why did it ever break apart? Well, it had some locations where there was hot asthenosphere kind of boiling up down below um, that started to push it. Now the question is, can we put this all together? And what might that look like? All right, so how do we put those three things together? Um, I think it's really important to take ideas because it's not just one thing necessarily working by itself, but to put it together in a model that you can actually visualize. So you could even think about flying out to the East Pacific Ocean and think about the Mid-Oceanic Ridge and then the other interactions that you can see. So if, we, if I were to put it together, um, I would start, I'm gonna put us out, as I just said, in the ocean so we have sea level way out here we're going to find out we have a divergent plate boundary we have a continental plate we have our oceanic plate Okay, so here at our mid-oceanic ridge, this is a divergent boundary. We have our hot asthenosphere rising up. And that's gonna push these two plates apart. So this is our example where we have ridge push. So the plates push them apart. That is at our divergent boundary. Now as that plate goes out, this is very warm, low density, so it's lifted up higher. As it moves away from our spreading center, the oceanic plate is going to cool, it condenses, and it gets denser. So when it runs into our continental plate, it subducts. As it goes down, it's cold, uh, cold and dense, and that pulls the rest of the plate behind it. So we have slab pull, beating that plate motion up right at that subduction zone. It doesn't just pull it down, but as it cools, it gets to the point where it starts to roll back. So it's going to roll back. That's going to create a new current here, a little suction current. We'll call that slab suction. And that's gonna result in pulling this continental lithospheric plate towards the subduction zone, which is right here. So that is our subduction zone, our oceanic trench, and the slab pull is pulling our plate in into the subduction zone as well. So we would have this convergent plate motion um, where the slab pull and the rollback and that suction are all happening. So that's one way you can put those three ideas together um, in one easy diagram.